AMC had a pretty slow day today, but overall it was okay because we were able to hold that line of support at $13 per share. We knew it was going to be significant, and we were able to hold above it, and we're kind of testing and playing around that line right now after hours, but I believe we got big things coming in the future. So in this video, let's talk about a couple of the most recent uh, analyst expectations and price targets that they have out there, and then some kind of bonus news that maybe could be good for movie theaters in general, especially socks like AMC. Now, if this sounds like something you're interested in, let's get started. What's up everybody, I'm Clay. We're gonna make 2021 the best year ever. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to click that subscribe button and become a bro. All right, so let's talk about AMC stock. Some of the latest and greatest, pff, I say greatest, right? But they're not great. They're analyst expectations and no analyst has anything good to say about AMC. And we expect that, right? I mean, we know that there's a battle raging right now, retail investors versus Wall Street. And the Wall Street pros all have negative things to say about AMC. So let's go over this recent article by The Motley Fool. And look, this is a little bit... I like this article more than most of the recent ones because they weren't talking down too bad about AMC. You know, it's it, they were given some facts and they were saying, Okay, we realize there's a battle raging right now. Uh, investors in retail investors are, are investing in one thing, they see one thing, and these analysts, these Wall Street pros, they're seeing another thing. So they understand that there's a battle raging on, and not everybody is seeing eye to eye. So with that being said, let's look at kind of just a little brief summary of what this is saying here and where these analysts are putting their price targets. Now, we've already talked about the one, right? We've already talked about the guy from Lightshed that said a AMC stock should be trading at a penny. He's in here, but we're just going to ignore that guy, right? So it says, Most Wall Street pros are still skeptical about the recent rally in shares of AMC Entertainment Holdings, and Jason Bazinet from Citi put out an updated note on the country's largest multiplex operator on Tuesday, sticking to his sell rating and a $2 price target. $2. That's what... If we're talking about $2, I mean, we're not even talking about levels that we were reaching during the worst of the pandemic. So when you put a $2 price target on this stock, it's kind of like, where are you even getting these estimates and these numbers from? Because I believe we bottomed at about 190 when it was at its worst point. So we're, we're already doing better than we were. We've got movie theaters opening up all over the country. California is supposed to be fully open by March 19th. You know, New York's open. LA is starting to open. They've got locations open already. And revenue is starting to pour in. You know, they've restructured. They've got enough cash on hand to last at least a year. So they're not going to face bankruptcy as long as, you know, we don't have any new pandemic come along or anything of that matter. And it's kind of like, all right, dude, slow down a little bit if you're saying $2 on your thing. But it gets worse, trust me. So let's go down here to the next paragraph. There's clearly a disconnect between analysts and AMC's buoyant stock chart. Clearly, thank you, Motley Fool, for pointing that out. There is a drastic disconnect between pro analysts, guys that are paid to analyze these stocks and put price targets on there at two dollars at, at what, like ten percent of the value of the stock? Yeah. So clearly a disconnect. Thank you for agreeing with me on that one, Motley Fool. Bazinet at two dollars seems low, but he's not even at the bottom of the list, right? We know that the guy with the pennies at the bottom of the list. But Eric Handler and MKM Partners put out a $1 price target. All right, $1, $2 seems bad, $1 seems bad. And then they go on to talk about the guy that put a price target in there at one penny. So it's just kind of like, guys, what are you doing right now? Are you really analyzing the stock? Do you understand that there's pent-up demand out there that people are going to want to go to the movie theaters? Even if they weren't movie regular attendees of the movie theaters, people have been cooped up in their houses so long that they want to go out. They want to experience that, you know, normal life. And they want to do things and go on dates and have fun weekends and things like that. So the movie theaters will be seeing increased demand hopefully in levels that were even higher than pre-pandemic levels because people have been shut out for so long. 
Now, it does go on to say here that the stock soared 74% over the past six trading days, blah, blah, blah. And the highest of the seven leading analyst firms with a price goal for the stock is currently $7 per share. Now, $7 per share, I can kind of get on board with that because there is a significant level of support at $7 per share. Now, the th this really, the $7 per share mark is the only analyst expectation that I would foresee as a reality. You know, we've got this level of support now at $13 per share. It was a previous level of resistance. If we fall through that, we've got, you know, if you're bearish, of course, we're talking the bears right now. If we fall through that, it's $11. Below that, we're looking at the $7 range. So I can understand where he would come up with $7 per share if he's a bear, which clearly he is. He's got a sell recommendation, and he believes that it's going to fall to $7 per share. Awesome. I'll get on board with your expectation of $7. But that's not the direction that I see AMC stock going, okay? I believe that we're going to see increased gains due to the factors that we just talked about. Pent-up demand. A lot of people are going to want to go to the movie theaters. They're going to want to get out of the house and see. And it, there's a lot of places that are writing right now that, like, streaming is going to be... It's going to replace movie theaters. People are comfortable now sitting in their homes and watching a movie on a Friday night or sitting in their homes and watching a movie on a Saturday night. And I forget exactly who it was, but there was a comment on one of the recent videos that I did. It made an excellent point. It's like, yeah, people can eat dinner in their own homes too, but they go out to restaurants. People can, you know, drink beer in their own homes, but they go out to bars. People can watch movies in their own homes. But since movie theaters have been around, they've gone to movie theaters. So it's kind of like, yeah, everybody can do all of this stuff in their homes, but they go out to do it. There will always be demand for the entertainment industry, whether that's in the comfort of your own home or whether that's going to movie theater. You know, it's very hard to recreate the experience that you get at a movie theater in your own home. Yeah, it might be nice to, to lay up on the couch and, you know, put a blanket on and watch some Netflix, but you're not getting the same experience. You know, it's not like you're getting these blockbuster films. You don't have the same high-definition screens. You don't have the same surround sound system. It's like two completely different experiences, and I don't believe that streaming is going to completely take over the movie theater industry. Now, bonus, a little bit extra. What's going on here? I saw some articles on it today. I want to make mention of it right now, and we can do a touch-up on it later. We can talk about it a little later when more details are released. But Movie Pass. For those of you that don't know what Movie Pass is, at the end of 2019, it was pretty big. They were selling a lot of them. It was basically at a $10 price target, and you would buy a Movie Pass, and you could go to the movie theaters unlimited times during the month. It was $10 a month, like a subscription. And it was through MoviePass, right? Well, the original MoviePass website is still dormant, but there's a lot of speculation going on right now. If you go to MoviePass.Ventures, I believe it is, there is a countdown clock for about 5 days and 17 hours, and it says the movie will start. So what do they got going on here? I don't know what's up their sleeves, but this could be reviving the movie theater industry, and we could really see some huge demand based on that as well as these people get out there and try to sell more subscription services like they were before. So if you found that interesting, let us know down in the comments below. If you agree with these analysts, if you're an AMC bear, I doubt it because you're watching this video right now. So let us know what you got AMC at if you're excited to hold it, and we're, re we're gonna retest that $20 per share mark hopefully in the near future, within the next week or so. So guys, inspire us with your stories, make us better investors, and really encourage us to keep those diamond hands down in the comments below. Now look, if you're brand new to trading, there's a link for Weeble down there. Go ahead, click on that link, sign up, deposit the $100, and you're going to get a couple free stocks just for doing so. And they are handing out shares of AMC right now, which is a huge bonus, and a lot of people are excited about it. So make sure to click that and if you want to share this video, you could do so anywhere and tag me at Claybro. I'd love to follow you guys back and really see what everybody's interested in investing in. And if you got one more shot to click that subscribe button, help us out. We're going for 10,000 subscribers. I'd really appreciate it. Now, until the next time, guys, I hope that each and every one of you have an awesome day.